This is the 4K version of this video. A link to the 8K version is in the description area below if you wanna watch it, as well as the reasons for me posting them separately. My goal on this show is to warp people's perception of all sorts of things that they see in the world, not only by using high-speed cameras, but also by using various filming techniques and equipment that I built and developed over the years, as well as some of the coolest technology I can get my hands on to make things happen camera or otherwise. So I figured why not film the see-through rotary engine with three of the best cameras in the world and see what it looks like. I'll hold my own opinions, but tell me what you think. And those cameras are the Red 8K Monstro Vista Vision, the Canon C200, yep. And of all the cameras I've used, this is one of my all-time favorites, the Vision Research Phantom Flex 4K. I'm gonna set up this engine and put it through one complete run and show you some footage of each camera side by side. Now the red is an 8K full frame sensor. The Canon footage is going to be raw internal, upscaled from 4K to 8K. The Vision Research Flex 4K is going to be also upscaled from 4K to 8K and that is in raw. And I think this is gonna warp your perception because it definitely warped mine. I found these results very interesting, but again, tell me what you think of the footage and uh, yeah, let's see how it looks. For each test, I used identical camera settings, same camera position, lighting, and lenses, except for the Flex 4K, I had to use a different lens, but that camera is kind of in a different league because it's a high-speed camera, but it does produce some absolutely beautiful images, which is why I figured it would be fun to include it. Okay, the truth comes out here. Not only is this video good to give you an idea of what footage from those three awesome cameras look like, but I also used it as an excuse to film a few full throttle runs that I didn't get to film for the full see-through rotary episode. And those clips that you just watched, those were a couple of small full throttle runs, but for this next clip, I'm gonna push it farther than I've ever pushed this see-through rotary engine and see what it does. I think you're gonna love it. It's just nuts. Check it out. And draw your own conclusions, but if you watch the fuel tank while the engine's running, you can get an idea for just how much fuel this engine eats up.
dollars. That was nice. So I just got finished doing that like full throttle run over and over. And I know you're probably thinking, man, that guy's nuts because I put my finger over the exhaust port to stop the engine, which is probably partially true. But the truth of the matter is the engine isn't really overheating and it's not burning hot. I mean, it's kind of hot. The engine just finished running and I can put my thumb on here without getting burned. Actually, I could hold my thumb on there. And the reason for that is by burning methanol in here and pretty much it's burning a lot of methanol it has a substantial cooling effect on the combustion in this particular rotary engine i ran it full throttle over and over as you saw i mean the engine's not smoking it's not overheating it didn't blow up and it's not that hot i had another idea i have the final version of the see-through engine set up because we're currently filming that episode where i try to blow it up with turbo and nitromethane and a couple other surprises I have in store. And I figured, why not give these cameras a little bit of a rolling shutter challenge? And this is gonna challenge the scan time of the sensor because this engine, when it's running, vibrates violently back and forth, left to right. Almost no camera would ever be able to keep up with this. But that's why this is an extreme test. So here it goes. Tell me what you think. Again, take it for what it's worth. This isn't a situation that these cameras would normally see on most film sets, but they are very common on my sets. Keep in mind that these shots were done with each camera at its base ISO, 30 frames per second, 180 degree shutter, no additional lighting, only house lights, so they're a little bit underexposed, but that was the idea. Most of the time for me, it's less important how the camera looks on paper than how the camera looks on screen. Very often, in my cases especially, my sets tend to be some of the most aggressive in the film industry. So when I start using these cameras in real situations, sometimes they tend to not do what they're designed to do. And sometimes they do things they weren't designed to do. And that is why I test all of the equipment myself and I don't take anybody's word for it. So tell me what you think looks better in the comments below. If you're a subscriber and you're wondering why you didn't get notified of this video, it's because I disabled the push notifications for this one. I didn't think it was directly related to the show, but I did find the results very interesting and I thought you would too. Especially if you're a filmmaker and trying to decide what camera to use for what, if you have a budget. Uh, I know it helped me, so hopefully it helped you. Other than that, thanks for watching. Look out for the full episodes, they're coming up soon.